on this baccalaureate service a heartfelt congratulations to the elementary, high school, and college graduates of Grace Christian College as you all move to another phase of your life. What is a baccalaureate service? The baccalaureate service traces its modern roots to Harvard University's first commencement in 1642. It was started as a worship service where graduates are reminded that they have a greater calling than just serving themselves. Unlike a graduation commencement ceremony where diplomas are awarded, the baccalaureate is an opportunity for students to present themselves humbly before God in thanksgiving for all that God has done during the student's academic studies. So today, let us focus with thanksgiving on God's grace and blessings in our lives, especially in our academic lives. You are the first group entering this pandemic, post-pandemic generation, which has fundamentally changed the world. And the exciting thing is that you have an amazing opportunity to make a mark and leave a great impact in these new times. However, despite it being a new world which you will be entering, there are still some facts of life that will never change. And one of these facts of life that will never change, even amidst a changing time, is the search for significance, the search for meaning, purpose, and life. What is my worth and value in a world of over 7 billion people? Can I really make an impact? Perhaps some of you are asking. A comedian once said, the reason adults are always asking children what they want to be when they grow up is because they are looking for ideas. Sadly, there are a lot of people of any age living very aimless, unfulfilled, purposeless, unsatisfactory lives because they don't know how they should live. A world that promises so much but delivers so little. In a world that is a mess, how do we find purpose and significance? Let me share with you from David's valedictory in 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9. In 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9, David is near the end of his life and gathers all the people to deliver his valedictory. A valedictory is a closing or farewell address or statement, but in our context, often delivered at commencement exercises. The context of the passage is that David tells the people that he cannot build the temple of God as he so desires, but that honored task has been given to his son Solomon. It had been David's heartfelt desire to build the temple of God, but alas, it was not the will of God, and so David humbly accepts God's will. But David leaves a charge to his son Solomon. David tells Solomon three things for how he can find purpose and significance in his life in order to honor God. Can you imagine having to follow the greatest and most beloved king of Israel? David wanted Solomon to be better than him. So let's take a look. Turn with me in your Bibles, if you have it, to 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9. 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9. And as you're turning to this verse, you may be wondering why I'm wearing my doctoral academic gown which is indicated by these three stripes. I'm doing it to illustrate a point, because I've often asked, why does a doctoral gown have three stripes indicating a doctorate? But no one seems to know. So for me, I use it to remind me of three biblical principles that come out of this one verse, and they are a reminder to me of how I should live my life to attain God's honor regardless of academic degrees. I call these principles life stripes, and without a doctoral degree, you can also earn your life stripes as well. Look at me at the beginning of verse 9. As for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father and serve him with a loyal heart and with a willing mind. The first charge from David to Solomon is to know God. It's not to know about God, but to know God. In this generation, there are lots of people who know about God. They know about His characteristics, His power, His works, but they do not know personally God. They do not walk with Him. They do not abide in Him. They know about God intellectually, but the charge is for us to know God, to follow Him, to heed His call, to walk with Him, to know Him in an intimate manner, and to allow the knowledge of who He is, transform 
your life. My charge to all of the graduates here and also to those who are listening is for you to know God, not simply to know about God. Walk in a personal relationship with Him. Desire to want to know Him and to be with Him in prayer and in the personal study of His Word. If you are in a relationship with God, you will savor His Word, and you can't wait to spend time with Him. You know, I still have every letter, every email, every card my now wife Cindy wrote when she was just my girlfriend, my fiancé. We were on two different sides of the world. I was in Texas, she was in the Philippines. It was those days before instant messaging was a thing, and people actually had to write cards and letters. As an engineer by education, I would analyze every word in that letter. I would reread those letters. I would try to read between the lines what was Cindy trying to say. One of the happiest days of my life was when I noticed the first time she wrote the word love in the letter's salutation. It was just awesome. Love, Cindy. It made me want to know her more, this person who says she loves me. I want to know everything about her. And it is because she said she loves me. In the same way, God tells us in His book that He loves us unconditionally. And in return, we might say we do love God. But if you love God as you say that you do, but don't spend time with Him, then what you are saying is, inconsistent with your actions, and your actions show much more than what your words say. That desire for you to know God has to come from yourself. Your faith has to be your own. As you graduate, you will no longer have the constant reminder for you to do your devotions or quiet time. No one will lead you in a class devotional. There will not be a reminder to pray and to seek God's will. You are on your own. You have to own your faith. You have to go through your own crises and decide if you want to trust and cling to the God of the universe. So life stripe number one, know God with all of your heart. Know God with all of your heart. That is the charge. Because the more you know Him and fear Him, meaning respect Him for who He is, the bolder you will be for Jesus Christ. As G.K. Chesterton said, we fear men so much because we fear God so little. One fear cures another. Today we fear the world because if we stand for Christ, then we think about what will happen to us. We will be ostracized. People will make fun of us. People will mock us. They won't think that we are very academically smart because they think that we follow this person called Jesus. Perhaps in the future, you may not be able to get a job because you stand so boldly for Jesus. Perhaps you won't be able to make lots of money because you know Jesus. And so we shirk back from our boldness for Jesus. But don't worry about being bold for the Lord, because our all-powerful God takes care of those who stand up for Him. Just remember the stories of Daniel in the Old Testament or the Apostle Paul in the New Testament, just to name a few. But it all begins with knowing God. Knowing God with all of your heart will challenge you to stand boldly for Him. A young girl once consulted with her pastor I cannot stick it out any longer. I am the only Christian in my office where I work. I get nothing but taunts and sneers. It is more than I can stand. I'm going to resign. The pastor asks, will you tell me where lights are placed? The young Christian asks the pastor rather bluntly, what has that to do with anything? Never mind, the minister replied. Answer my question. Where are lights placed? She replied, well, I suppose in dark places. Yes, the pastor said. And that's why you've been put in that office where there is such spiritual darkness and where there is no other Christian to shine for the Lord. The young Christian realized for the first time the opportunity that was hers. She felt that she could not fail God by allowing her light to go out. She went back to the office with renewed determination to let her light shine in that dark corner. 
Before long, she was the means of leading nine other co-workers to the light of Christ. I don't know where your next steps will be. For some, back to school. For others, in the workplace. But in those dark places, God has put you as the light of Christ to influence the world. Knowing God and being bold for Him in whatever situation and circumstance He may put you in is what He so desires. And so know God with all of your heart. Look again with me at the first part of verse 9. As for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father and serve Him with a loyal heart and with a willing mind. Serve Him with a loyal heart. The second life stripe is to serve God with a loyal heart. To find purpose and significance, you have to serve God, your maker, your creator, to glorify Him with your life. But there is a condition here about the type of heart you are to have when you serve God. It is a heart that is loyal. The word loyal in its Hebrew context has the idea of completeness, whole, satisfied. You are to serve God with the loyalty of your entire heart. You are not to serve God with only half a heart. The Bible tells us clearly you cannot serve two masters. When you serve God with a whole heart, it will lead to the satisfaction of your heart. In life, everyone, whether students or workers, are looking for fulfillment in their life, to be satisfied with where they are in life. But a life lived for the values of this world leads to a life that is very unsatisfied. A recent search on Amazon.com turned up 18,726 self-help books, while bookstore Barnes & Noble claims that they have 23,070 books in the same category. They range widely in topics covering everything from how to find inner peace, how to make more money, to how to win friends. Chances are that no matter what you think is the key to a more fulfilling life, you can find a book with a how-to method covering it. Everyone is looking for fulfillment and satisfaction and purpose. Why not look at the Word of God to get the answer to finding purpose? And the Bible tells us it is found when we serve God with a whole loyal heart. Because what that does is that it directs us to recognize that when we serve God, we do so with an eternal purpose. And when we live for eternity, then we are satisfied. How much money, how many degrees, how powerful, how many friends you have, how many followers you have on Instagram, how famous before you can say, I can rest now, I have achieved what I wanted. If you go in that route, you will never be satisfied. I remember this little pithy statement. It goes something like this. First, I was dying to finish elementary and start high school. Then I was dying to finish high school and start college. And then I was dying to finish college and start work. And then I was dying to marry and have children. And then I was dying for my children to grow old enough for school so that I could return to work. And then I was dying to retire. And now I am dying. And suddenly I realized I forgot to live. You can only find life's purpose and can be truly, fully satisfied when serving the Lord, wholly devoted to Him. That is because that is a life that is lived without regrets at whatever age it may end. I'm sure many of you have lots of dreams. Many of those dreams are for you to be somebody, to do something great. Even a young elementary age student has dreams to be someone or to do something. Young kids today want to grow up to be vloggers of all things, to be YouTube stars. Now, if these dreams are from the Lord, that's wonderful. But how do you know if those desires in your heart is from the Lord? Let me ask you in your life's dream, is God in any of it? Remember, you are to serve Him with a loyal heart. If God isn't in it, let me tell you, you are in for an unsatisfactory, unfulfilled life. 
I have gotten a glimpse of the so-called best of the world. I've climbed the top of the corporate ladder working in corporate America. I've traveled the world. Without God, when you reach the top of the hill, all you will find is nothing. And when you look beyond it, it is a path of destruction, broken hearts, broken dreams, because that is what the world gives you. It promises you so many things, but it always breaks those promises. Life's purpose is found when you serve the Almighty God with your whole heart, a loyal heart, and it will lead to the satisfaction of your soul because when we serve God, it is for an eternal purpose. Whatever you do, remember, do it all for the glory of God because what we do for the Lord garners heavenly and eternal rewards. In all that I do, ask yourself the question, does it glorify God? It's a simple question that reminds me and should remind us if we are serving Him with a whole heart. Does it glorify God? A Yale University president gave this advice to a former president of another college. Always be kind to your A and B students. Someday, one of them will return to your campus as a good professor. But also, always be kind to your C students. Someday, one of them will return as a businessman and build you a $2 million science laboratory. What does that say? It means that your grades do not determine who you are. Having good grades does not automatically mean that you will turn out well in life. I have seen some of the smartest people in my life achieving something so great in their academic life, but sadly, they have forgotten and even rejected God. They become proud, arrogant, selfish, stuck up. And then I've seen some of the poorest students become some of the most successful people, not necessarily monetarily, but in this thing called life as they exude godly qualities of humility and kindness and compassion. The second stripe on this gown is a reminder to me, and I hope a reminder to you, to serve God with a loyal heart. Look at me again at the first part of verse 9. As for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father and serve him with a loyal heart and with a willing mind. In this third charge from David to Solomon, it was to serve God with a willing mind. To find purpose and significance, you and I have to serve God, your maker, your creator, with a mind that is willing. Now, what in the world does that mean? The word willing has the idea of delighting in, having pleasure in, to favor Him. You see, the third stripe, stripe number three, is to find delight in your walk with God. Life stripe number three, find delight in your walk with God. Find delight in your walk with God. Literally, David charges Solomon to serve God with a mind that delights in him, that takes pleasure in being with him. You will find purpose and significance in this life when you learn to delight yourself in your relationship with the Lord as you serve him. Remember what the psalmist wrote in Psalm 37 verse 4, delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. When you delight, when you enjoy the Lord, then the passions and the significance and the purpose of your life will begin to be fulfilled. His desires become your desires. And when your desires are being met, then you find purpose and satisfaction. You see, after graduation, as you, quote, unquote, grow up, you won't have someone always keeping you accountable. You have to come to a point in your life where you want to be with Jesus instead of being forced or having to do it. You know, growing up, there was one chore I hated doing. I hated to wash dishes. And in America, that was one of my chores in the family, was to take turns washing dishes. In fact, I hated it so much, I would pay my little brother to wash dishes for me, taking my turn. But when I became a little bit older, and when I discovered women... I would go over to a girl's house when I was invited by their family, and after dinner, I would volunteer to the girl's parents, let me wash the dishes. If my parents were there that evening in the home where I volunteered to wash dishes, 
they would fall out of their chairs because never in my life have I volunteered to wash dishes in our own home. Of course, I volunteered to wash dishes and even did it with an ulterior motive, but there was a willingness to do it. Why? Because there was someone that I liked. In the same way, your relationship with Jesus and my relationship with Jesus should not be something that is forced. We should love Him so much because He first loved us and He died on the cross for our sins and through Him we have eternal life that we should want to live our lives for Him, to delight ourselves in Him. Young people, with your minds, cultivate towards a deep desire to delight in the things of the Lord. Do you take pleasure in knowing Him? Or do you have to be guilted into reading your Bibles or prayer? You take a lot of pleasures in posting things on social media like IG or FB or chatting over Discord. These same pleasures that you have come to enjoy, if only you can find the same pleasure in your relationship with the Lord, when that happens, you will have significance and purpose in your life. Desire to follow His ways, delight in Him. Delighting in the Lord is to allow the Scriptures, the Bible, to richly dwell in you. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16 says, let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalm and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Letting the Word of God dwell in you means to learn and apply the things of Scripture in your life. You don't need any self-help books or motivation books. You just look into the Scriptures, the living Word of God, it will challenge you and motivate you and give you satisfaction and purpose in this life at whatever age. Remember, even if you are graduating, you are still lifelong learners. And the most important thing you need to study and learn is the Word of God. I'm reminded of a wonderful story of a little boy who went to his friend's house almost every day. And every time he went to his friend's house, he would find his friend's grandmother deeply engrossed in reading her Bible. Finally, his curiosity got the better of him, and he asked his friend, why do you suppose your grandmother reads the Bible so much? His friend answered, I'm not sure, but I think it's because she's cramming for her final exams. Funny as it may be, you know that this little boy is actually right. We need to read the Bible so that we can study for the final exams of life. That is something that our tests depend on. If we are to pass life's test, then we need to know the Bible. That's how we can graduate life with flying colors. Studying the Bible is not about how much you know. It's about how much you know and live out. This third strife reminds me to delight in serving God to delight being in intimate relationship with Him, a willing heart that desires to just be with our Lord. And by doing so, we would naturally want to study His Word. And when we live it out, we find purpose. And the reason for living out these three things is so that we can live authentically. We can be authentic witnesses for Jesus to the world. Look at the second phrase in verse 9. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intent of the thoughts. Here the Bible is telling us that God is looking into our lives, each one of us, even now. You can't fake the Christian walk. So you should walk the talk. You should live out your faith. We can't fake the process. God looks right into our hearts. It's been interesting that in these times of online school, Students have figured out how to game the system. And this may not be you, but this represents a lot of students around the world where they perfectly position the camera where it only sees the forehead of their head. So they don't know or the teachers don't know what the students are looking at. Or perhaps they have multiple browser tabs open so that they can be watching YouTube while supposedly listening to the lectures. Or perhaps they have two computers or two devices up for those that can afford it, 
And on one, they're playing video games. And on, on the other, they're listening to the lectures. You've gamed the system. You know how to, how to do well in this new learning environment. But the Bible tells us you can't fool the Lord if you're going to fake your way through life. The Bible tells us God is searching all hearts. He's examining. He's looking. He understands the intent of the thought. He is omniscient. He sees right into our hearts, and God knows our hearts. He knows if we're truly sorry or if we're just praying or attending church or doing Bible study or reading God's Word because we want, quote-unquote, good luck with a job interview or passing a test or passing a board exam. He knows the reasons of our hearts. And Jesus' warning here is for us not to be hypocrites, to live out your life authentically, not like the Pharisees of His day. You either are or are not living the Christian life, a life that follows Jesus. You and I cannot fake it through our life. It's easy to say that you are a Christ follower, perhaps because you have graduated from this school, people will assume that you are a Christ follower. But unless you have taken concrete action in how you live your life, then the proof just isn't there. The Bible tells us that at the end, everything will be revealed. The things, whether you do good or bad, will be revealed. And as you start a new phase of your life, remember that there's a permanent record being written about your life. You may not think that your life is worth writing about, but you have an autobiography, each one of you, even myself, being written about me that is a part of the permanent record of heaven. The Bible tells us that in the book of the Revelation, chapter 20, that books are being written about our lives. And if your life is being written about, how will your story read? This is a generation, young and old, that can sniff out hypocrisy a mile away. So be true to yourself. Be true to the Lord. Live out an authentic Christian life to be an authentic witness for Jesus to the world. And you do so by living out those three life stripes. Now look with me at the last part of verse 9. If you seek Him, He will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Here the Bible tells us, if you seek the Lord, that means if you look for him, you will find help. You will find strength. You will find the aid that you need. But if you don't, God will let it happen that in your life, you will get what you want. And that means oftentimes you will fail in your life. You may achieve worldly success, but be a failure eternally and spiritually. You must ask the question, do you want God's success or do you want the temporal human success that so many desire? Don't let the future worldly success of your life take you away from the Lord. Know God with all of your heart. Serve God with a loyal heart. Find delight in your walk with God. And that will result in authentic witness for Jesus to the world. So perhaps you can pray as Dr. Kelly did. On the night of his graduation from medical college, Dr. Howard A. Kelly, world-famous surgeon, wrote in his diary, I dedicate myself, my time, my capabilities, my ambition, everything to Him, Blessed Lord, sanctify me to Thy uses. Give me no worldly success, which may not lead me nearer to my Savior. Give me no worldly success, which may not lead me nearer, closer to my Savior. True success and purpose in this life is a life that is lived for God's glory. May God bless each one of you, and may God bless our graduates. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank You for Your Word. It is succinct and it is straight to the point. Father, help us to pray as Dr. Kelly did, that You will not allow us any worldly success that will draw us away from You. Help us to dedicate our lives to You. 
Help us to know You with all of our hearts, to serve You with a loyalty that is true to You, to find delight in our walk with You so that we can be witnesses for You to this world. Heavenly Father, I pray for wisdom and discernment for these graduates as they enter a new generation, a post-COVID world. I pray that they would adapt quickly, but always be grounded to the foundational truths of Scripture. And I pray that they would always look to the Scripture for help. They would find in the Bible the reminder daily to live their lives for you and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.